Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to the next video dealing with decomposition and this is where we're going to be dealing with cases of quadratics where that A value is not going to be one. So I'm actually going to go over a couple of different videos for all of these quadratics. Notice that the B value and the C value, they're both going to be positive except for this last one. But when we factor out a negative because of this negative leading coefficient, the B value and the C value will turn positive. So notice that pattern here. And then in the next couple of videos, we'll factor quadratics where maybe that B value will be negative or that C value will be negative or some kind of combination. So just a bunch of videos going over further practice with decomposition. So let's start off with part A. So we got 2x squared plus 7x plus six, like that. So first thing we always check with factoring, can we take out a greatest common factor? Notice in this case, we can't. So let's go right into the decomposition. So same steps as before, A value is two, the B value is seven, the C value is six. Then what we get is the AC value, which is six times two, and so it's gonna be 12. So notice now with these examples, the AC value is gonna be different than the C value versus in the previous section because that A value is one, the C and the AC were usually the same, but now they're gonna be different. And so when we're finding two numbers that multiply, it's gotta to be to this AC value of 12, not to the C value of six. So just be careful with that. And then we gotta find two numbers that add up to the B value of seven. So what would those two numbers be for and three, right? Four times three is positive 12, four plus three is seven. And so what we do is we take these two numbers here and then we decompose that B value. So we gotta do the full process here of decomposition of factoring by grouping. Before when the A value is one, at this point we were able to just get those two factors like that as a shortcut. Unfortunately here, it's not gonna work. And that's why I suggested in the previous section doing the full work every time so you could be prepared for this section where you have to do this work. So from these first two, what can we take out? Notice we could take out a 2x, right? We could take out a 2 from the 2 and 4, and then we could take out an x from both of these, and we'd be left with x plus 2 in brackets. Then from these two, we could take out a 3, and we'd be left with x plus 2. Then we could take out this factor, this binomial common factor x plus two, and we'd be left with two x plus three like that. All right, so same exact process as before. And then for all of these, I'll do a quick check with this one. I won't do it with the rest of them, but for all of them, if you wanna check your answer, you could just expand this. So notice two x times x gives us two x squared, three x, 4x, 6, and then notice the like terms there. They would net out to 7x. And so notice that this and the original expression are the exact same thing. All right, so that is the fully factored form uh, right there for part A. So we got x plus 2, 2x plus three like that. Next up would be six x squared plus 19 x plus 15. So as usual, first thing we check for, greatest common factor. Between six, 19 and 15, there's no common number that we could take out. And then there's x's here, but then there's no x variable there. So can take anything out initially. So let's go into the decomposition. So we'll have an A value of six, a B value of 19, and then the C value of 15. And then we have to get the AC value, which would be 90, right? 15 times six is 90. Find two numbers that multiply to 90, add up to 19. And those two numbers would be 10 and nine. 10 times nine is 90, 10 plus nine is 19. So then we could decompose this. It doesn't matter which order you put it. You could put nine X here and 10 X here, or 10 X here and nine X here. I'll just put 10 X plus nine X plus 15. 
Um, and then from these two, we could take out a what? Between six and 10, we could take out a two. We could also take out an x. Six x squared divided by two x would give us three x. And then 10 x divided by two x would give us five. Between nine x and 15, notice between the nine and 15, we could take out a three. And what would we be left with? Three x plus five. Nine x divided by three is three x. 15 divided by three gives us five. These two brackets, if you're doing it correctly, should always be the same. It's a nice check within the process that you have available. If they're not the same, then you gotta go back and check something that you did wrong. So three X plus five we could take out, then we're left with two X plus three like that. So this would end up being three X plus five, two X plus three. And again, if you wanna check your answer, you could expand this and you should get that initial expression. Okay, moving on to uh, part C. So we got 10x squared plus 28x plus 16. First thing we always check for, greatest common factor. Notice in this case, we can take out a two from all of these, right? Two goes into 10, 28, and 16. So if we take out a two, we'd be left with 5x squared plus 14x plus eight like that. And now what we could do, we took the two out. Let's work with this bracket separately. Let's work with this quadratic here separately. So let's see if that factors by decomposition. Sometimes it will, sometimes it may not. Um, but I think this one will. So the AC value would be 40. And then we got to find two numbers that multiply to 40 and add up to the B value of 14. And those two numbers would be 10 and four, right? 10 and four work. So we could decompose this. And from these two, we could take out a five X and we'd be left with X plus two. And then from these two, we could take out a four and we'd be left with X plus two. And as expected, that bracket should be the same. And we end up with that right there. But remember, these two factors are this whole bracket, but we still have that two because this was the initial expression. So the final answer for part C ends up being two bracket x plus two times five x plus four. So don't forget any greatest common factors that you take out initially. Then moving on to part D. So we would have 4x squared plus 3x plus 4, like that. First thing we check, can we take anything out? In this case, we can't. So A value is 4, the B value is 3, the C value is 4. So what would the AC value be? 4 times 4, which is 16. And find two numbers that multiply to 16 and add up to 3. And in this particular case, there's actually not going to be any two numbers that satisfy both of these conditions here, right? Four times four, but four plus four is eight, or maybe eight times two, eight plus two is 10, it's not three. Okay, so there's no numbers here. And so this here, part D, it's actually not possible to factor. So if something's not possible to factor, this is the step at which you'll know. If you can't find two numbers like that, then it's not possible to factor with decomposition. Now part E, last one. So we got negative uh, 15x squared minus 11x minus two. Now I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, because the leading coefficient is negative, we're definitely gonna take out a negative one for sure. Between 15, 11, and two, no number is a common factor between those. So we can't take out any other number. So we're actually just gonna take out a negative one. So we'd end up with 15x squared plus 11x plus two. And so notice that this quadratic here follows the same pattern as the other quadratics where that B value and that C value is positive. So from here, A is 15, B is 11, C is two, AC is 30. Find two numbers that multiply to the AC value of 30 and add up to the B value of 11. That would be what? 
uh, 6 and 5. Right, 6 times 5 is 30, 6 plus 5 is 11, so we can decompose that. And then from here, from the 15 and 6, we could take out a 3 and also an x, so we'd be left with 5x plus 2, like that. And then from the 5x plus 2, we can't take anything out from here. And if you can't, then all you do is you take out a positive 1 and you just leave it as is. We've done a bunch of examples like that in previous video where sometimes you can't take anything out in terms of numbers, so you just take out a positive 1. Or if this is a minus here, you take out a minus 1 and then the signs change. But in this case, we're just taking out a positive 1 in order for those brackets to be the same. And we're left with 3x plus 1. But going back to our main work, don't forget we took that negative out initially. So we got a negative 5x plus 2, 3x plus 1, like that. Right, so just a couple of scenarios where that B value and that C value is positive, and in the next video, we'll do different scenarios.